So you guys may or may not know that every single video I edit, whether it be for my YouTube channel or otherwise, has actually been punched out using my mid-2012 MacBook Pro. So back when I bought it, I did my best to spec this thing out, you know, with eight gigabytes of RAM and a few other bits and bobs, but over the past couple of years, it really has started to slow down big time. And so that's when I decided it was time to upgrade my computer. Now, I did a bit of research online and I came to the conclusion that I needed to install an SSD into my Mac. And according to the internet, this would do wonders for my machine. So I went online, did some research and ended up buying this 750 gigabyte SSD from Crucial. Before installing the SSD, I really wanted to make a comparison video that compared a few key processes in the day-to-day -day life of my MacBook Pro. And so if you're in a similar boat looking to upgrade your computer, then hopefully this video will help you make more of an informed decision. So I'm not gonna walk you through the installation process too heavily, but I will say it is super easy to do on your own, even to the point where Apple do not offer doing the upgrade for you because it is so user-friendly. But I will link a video that I use when performing the install down in the description below. So if you need some guidance, go and check that one out. So let's get to the comparison side of this video. The first thing I wanted to test was a simple boot up process and this is probably where you will see the biggest night and day difference between the two. On the right, the upgraded machine with the newly installed SSD finished its boot in just under 15 seconds, so quickly that I didn't even have time to stop the timer bang on. Meanwhile, the old machine is still booting and eventually loads up in a whopping one minute and 51 seconds. So without a doubt, this is a massive difference and definitely leaves you feeling like you've got a brand new device. After that, we have a file duplicating test. So I took the same file that was around 1.2 gigabytes in size and duplicated it on the desktop. And once again, the upgraded SSD flies by with this task, finishing off at just under 15 seconds, whereas the old hard drive takes roughly 45 seconds to complete the process. So without a doubt, these first two tests prove that this will definitely make your computer feel buttery smooth and day-to-day -day management of basic tasks such as transferring files, launching applications, restarting your Mac, and so on. And if you accumulate the amount of time it took my old machine to perform all these basic tasks, then the new SSD will definitely save you a load of time, which no doubt all of us could do with more of. If we take a look at the comparison of the write and read speeds, on the old hard drive we clocked out at just under 55 megabytes a second for write speed and just over 77 megabytes a second for the read speed. And with the newly installed SSD, we hit a whopping 477 megabytes a second on the write side and 418 megabytes a second on the read side. So a huge difference here. So from here, even though I wasn't necessarily expecting too big of a jump, I did want to check whether or not the SSD upgrade with its faster read and write speeds, whether that would make a difference to my editing workflow in terms of rendering and exporting times. So aside from the fact that both Premiere and After Effects now open in lightning time, I first created a test project within Premiere where I had a 30 second 1080p clip recorded using my T3i and placed that in a sequence with a title on top so as to add some extra rendering requirements. And I did not render the sequence within Premiere prior to exporting it. So on the old hard drive, exporting out this sequence to a 1080p H.264 file took the machine one minute and 17 seconds. And on the upgraded machine, it was slightly quicker at one minute and 14 seconds. But to be honest with you, I don't know if I would attribute that speed jump to the SSD as Premiere can often fluctuate in its render speeds at times. So I would say the SSD hasn't resulted in a noteworthy speed jump in exporting out of Premiere. Jumping into After Effects, and I took that exported clip and reduced it to five seconds. Otherwise, this test would have taken hours. And then I placed the processor heavy effects camera lens blur on the clip with a blur radius of 24 and exported the composition out to a lossless with alpha video file. On the old machine, this render completed in four minutes and 44 seconds. And on the new SSD, believe it or not, the render actually completed in six minutes and 34 seconds. So an increase in time. Now admission time, even though I know that you know that this is not a bulletproof test by any means, I also have to say that I did have to increase the blur radius in the second test on the new SSD to 25, because if I kept it at 24, then it would actually retain all the render information from the previous test. And so I had to up it to make it more of a fair test. So in other words, yes, it took longer to render, but in my mind, in no way does this mean that rendering will take longer if you upgrade your machine with a fresh SSD. What these tests do tell us though, is that upgrading your SSD will have little to no effect on heavy processor tasks such as rendering. And if your machine is already lightning fast in those other areas, then perhaps the solution is to up your RAM. The reason that I've personally not upgraded my RAM yet is because supposedly I've already maxed out the amount of RAM my computer can take at eight gigabytes. And even though technically there 
is space to fit an additional eight gigabytes in. It's actually touch and go whether or not my computer would actually use that additional RAM. So it's a fairly expensive gamble in my mind, one that I'm not yet ready to take. Either way, as everyone else who's upgraded to an SSD will tell you, this has definitely made my computer feel brand new and buttery smooth. And there are just so many day-to-day -day tasks, which I didn't even realize were taking up so much of my precious time that now I don't even consider because they fly by so quickly. So in conclusion, if you're looking to get some zip into your older MacBook, then an SSD will definitely do the trick. But aside from that, that is it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you later.